Hi, Svetlana. Hello, Arnie. So we have a blank board. This means we're taking a look at some interesting games or an opening. Exactly. We're taking a look at the op at an opening, yeah. and I thought today we would learn about the King's Indian attack. Ooh, we had something like this already, right? We had the King's Indian defense. That's the difference. So the King's mm -hmm. Indian attack is... Uh, oh, all right. I'm super curious. Why didn't I know that? I feel like it's such an amateur. I'm so sorry. Okay, King's Indian attack. Let's let's go. <laughs> yeah, so it's essentially... It, the name comes from the King's Indian defense, but we're playing it for white. And um, it's a unique setup that's really easy to learn, and it leads to um, really interesting middle games. So there are many move orders that can lead to it. Um, and it's a setup as opposed to like a line. So I will show it a bit differently. Um, we will just know where the pieces go and then we'll look at a game to um, to see how it can be played. So let's go. It can start um, for reference, the King's Indian defense would look like this for black. So that's how it uh, now if we turn the, now if we turn the pieces around, that's the setup we're going to go for as white. I understand. All right. Okay. This is, yeah, this is the King's Indian defense. Oh, I don't funny. know if I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we had so, a very, very uh, interesting episode about this. Please check our playlist if you are interested in that and if you haven't seen it yet. So right. we can start from many different move orders. I like to start through E4 and then get with the pieces where all the little arrows are. And... <laughs> I want to say right away that uh, there's some pros and cons to this um, to this opening. The pros, I would say, is that it's a good alternative against all the main lines. If you don't want to go too much in depth and play something of your own, this is um, this is also a good surprise weapon, and it's very very easy to learn. It's a bit like the London system. It's like a system. It's a setup where it goes, uh, where you you just put the, your pieces on the same squares pretty much every time. So there's not much deviation um, when the opponent plays something different. Not bad. But yeah, but there are also some cons. I would say you don't get an advantage out of the opening because you're kind of switching colors and being uh, on the black side of it. So you're not, you cannot really expect to have an advantage as white out of this opening. Although we're talking about like l really little, like 0 0.3 or something. And here you're just going to have 0, 0, 0, which is not bad either. Uh -huh. um, and it also leaves a lot of choice to the opponent. So, so depending quickly, on how you play, quickly ask yeah? you, sorry, um, but uh, how ha have you ever played it in a, a real over the board game yourself? Yeah, because, yeah, I played yeah. it a lot. Yeah, a lot, actually. All right. OK, super cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not one of my main openings, mm -hmm. but um, I play it selectively, and that's kind of what my advice is: is to only play it against certain lines. For example, against the Sicilian and the French. That has been my experience. Mm. So I start with e4, and then on the Sicilian or on the French, I yeah, I go I go for you the switch setup. Switch to King's Attack mode. Yeah, if there. I don't want to go for one of my main lines or um, make a surprise, that's my that would be my go-to opening because it's really easy to prepare in like a short period that's of time. So cool, actually, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I don't claim that this is like the main like a main repertoire against everything. Sure. And I think it's a lot more effective when you just do it against certain favorable lines. So that's just some, it's just an addition to what you would already play. So you could also start it with knight f3, which is what a lot of people do. Um, and um, that has its own benefits and disadvantages too. Um, so for example, you if the opponent also goes for the exact symmetrical setup, it's just going to be an equal game. And um, one of you has to take the center and you can then go for this and it will be exactly like the king's Indian defense. So if you notice the flipped pieces, it will be exactly the same. All the plans are the same. So the knight comes to c4 in this case. <laughs> the spawn always protects that knight there. And then you keep attacking on the e5 square. So that's all of these plans. To so anybody who plays the King's Indian, they will look very, very common and, uh, and, and very similar to what they already do. <laughs> now, the problem that I find with this, um, with starting with knight f3, is that the opponent can right away take the center 
and uh, well basically go for the king's indian defense and uh, its color is reversed right so it's good for a king's indian player because you have an extra tempo but um you're kind of willingly giving up the center giving up some chances for an advantage as white out of the opening so i don't mind this um once again it's exactly the king's indian mm -hmm. uh but I think there could be there could be some lines where you can get more out of this King's Indian setup. Since than you're white here. after all. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I want to show it in uh, like in a in different E4 sense. Style. I like this idea of uh, playing E4 anyway because it is after all the most popular opening um and if you then push in some other moves to go to a different opening this might be very unpleasant for e5 players or sicilian players after all sometimes if they're so into their theoretical uh ideas and that's a nice surprise exactly i think it's it could be really well combined with just playing e4 on the first move so um the three openings that it can kind of go against are the sicilian the french and the caracon a bit so let's see the sicilian first so we're going to develop the knight. Once again, it looks normal. That's what I like about it, is that it looks normal at first, and then it kind of deviates. So let's say black goes with d6, the most popular move. And that's where it's going to start to be a bit different. I like playing c3 here. And huh. then okay. this one is a bit of... It's it's Nobody's going to fall for it, but maybe in like blitz or something, somebody's going to take on e4 <laughs> and uh, fall for this queen a4 trick. But... That's really not something we're expecting, but it's just good to know that for now we can just keep up with our plan and play g3. Now, after the opponent has covered it, we definitely need to now we defend see. our pawn too. And that's how we get to our setup. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. So the king is safe. Like, There's yeah. no peace really in in lost or dire positions. Exactly. There's yeah, it is that. quite quite easy to to play. I know what you meant by this now. Yeah, and it looks like a very calm middle game. Although, as we'll see in the model game, the middle games um, could also be really aggressive. <laughs> so, depends on how the center is closed or open. Um, then you kind of decide what to play, and you already know all the main middle game plans. Um, in the Kings Indian, we also like to go for f4. Um, but that's going to depend on the uh, on the position. So that's how you could set it up against the Sicilian. And it works against other types of moves. So it doesn't necessarily have to be d6. It could work well against e6. That's actually how I started playing it against the Sicilian, is that I thought it was pretty effective against the e6 setups. Huh. And, um, and doing it like this. And this can actually come from the French. That's exactly. That's actually exactly the French too. So, so just a quick uh, question: If we are, if Black decides to swap everything, um, then we just take with the pawn, of course. Castle. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. That's the point yeah. of um, yeah. of the knight being here is that we don't want to trade queens, Good. and we keep the pawn central. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's how we normally do it. Um, the French, now the second option, how to play it against the French, exactly the same way. It might look a bit unambitious, but uh, that, that's just how that's just how we get to the setup. You know, you don't oh, take the center with d4, but it, it's, it's like this, so that after they capture, we can recapture with our pawn. Normally, black doesn't do this because then they're also giving up their center. So it's very rare, I would say, that they somebody keeps captures. attention, yeah. And then normally French players are going to go with for c5. And it's starting to look similar to what I showed that can come from the Sicilian, hmm. the East Sicilians. And also, sorry that I'm backtracking. I don't want to delay all of this too much. But if in case, so the knight move to f3 is mm -hmm. also once again, oh no, what am I talking about? No, no, there's no tricking here. Sorry, sorry for that. No, no, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that, was, that was my mistake. Um, <laughs> let's continue. All good. There's, there's no tricks for now. So um, we go for this setup, both castle. Now, c3 is a very common move in the King's Indian as well. You really want to protect um, 
any of these knight jumps to b4 or to d4. So c3 is normally a useful move. Mm -hmm. And then the plans are going to be that white tries to go for, like, tries to go attack in the center and on the king side, whereas black is going to attack on the queen side. And once again, exactly like the king's Indian. But since the colors are reversed, the game uh, the game is different, so you cannot just apply King's Indian theory to this. Um, it's going to modify the game somewhat um, for both sides. So um, that's that's kind of the direction where we go. And one and last um, opening that I, I would say could be played against, although I haven't tried it against this one. I've only played it against Sicilian and French. That's what I find the most effective. Um, so it could technically be played against the Karo Khan as well. Um, it would lead, I guess, to a bit of different positions depending on what the opponent does really. But since it's a setup, you can essentially play it against anything. But these three, I would say, are the most the ones that make a bit like the most sense. So if there's if you're looking for something against these um, yeah. these openings, it could be like an alternative. I, I know enough. Uh, players or, or friends or people who just started to say like ah, I, I have to quit e4 because I cannot play against the Sicilian or mm -hmm. use this exact same text against I hate Karo Khan or I hate the French so yeah this mm -hmm. is an interesting alternative which uh, yeah. is to consider you are allowed to play e4 still don't worry <laughs> yeah so I want to show a game now which comes from uh, Fisher played a long long time ago and uh, it's a, I would say it's a good demonstration on how to use the King's Indian attack and it was against the French All so right. against e6 do you remember how the setup goes yes of course it is d3 now exactly and now the knight to d2 yep so that's how it starts it looks like he remembered it well <laughs> try to test you then we go g3. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can continue. g3, the bishop g2. Yeah. And finally, knight to f3 and castle. Yeah. Yeah. Knight to g3. So. Easy. I know how to play the king's uh, Indian attack. Now. Already. That's See? It. You take, <laughs> yeah, you take uh, five minutes to just, uh, even not even five minutes. The setup <laughs> takes less to learn. So. Nice. Yeah, but of course, there is its own like theory and details. Obviously. But uh, it's honestly not necessary. That's why, um, like, I've used this opening sometimes just as, like, really quick preparation if I just didn't like what my opponent was, like, playing in any of the other lines. It's uh, it's an alternative, but not the main setup because it's pretty easy to equalize mm -hmm. if, if that matters to you when you're playing white. So what should white do now? What do you think hmm. is the rest of our plan? Oh, that's a good... Well, we could technically... Maybe... Well, there's a couple of options. I don't know what to do first. So one idea would be b3 maybe and the bishop to b2. But then uh, after d4, the black squared bishop is a little in a disadvantage. But then again, yeah, it has can have some alternatives for this. We could also play c3 because that was a one of the main moves you you mentioned earlier too maybe mm -hmm. this is an option yeah. and the last option i would always try to go for relatively quickly is to try to advance to f4 oh okay yeah so um a couple that you've mentioned c3 was one of the main moves so that one uh is definitely valid b3 is the one i see very commonly oh. so like it like uh, even my some of my students who like I play this setup, they like somehow end up playing b3. But I would say that b3 is not really where the bishop goes normally, although it looks really good. That's why a lot of people just like automatically think of playing it. Um, but I think I don't like it in the long run because it allows um, this queenside attack to come faster. Uh, 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 yeah. And also because the bishop can be locked out really easily. So... Um, it's yeah. It's mainly because this queen side attack comes a lot faster once you have moved that pawn. Of course, it's nothing criminal, but it just could end up with your bishop being, you know, in a in a bad place and locked out after d4. Yeah. So, 
So um, what did you that go one is a lot. Then? Or so, what did Fisher go yeah. actually? Fisher went right away with E5. Ah, why? Well, yeah, I thought about this uh, in the very, very beginning before we even started. I forgot about it uh, right mm -hmm. now. Yes. Well, he was a very uh, aggressive player, so he wants to start uh, to take space and make tactics right mm -hmm. away. Um, now he went rookie one. So you could also prepare this e5. You don't need to go for it immediately, although you can. You could also just prepare it with these slow moves with queen e2, rookie one, and then play e5. But playing it right away is also good. So this is the position from the game. Do you remember what the plans are for both sides, for both white and black? So white tries to attack on the king side, black on the queen side. Exactly, and that's very concise and well said. So... Now, the question of how, that's a bit more like complicated and it's uh, um, th that's how we will see the middle game unfold. So for black, I think it's rather simple, is that they just play with their pawns, the pawns until until the pawns can create some weaknesses. For white, I would say it requires a bit more skill to really break through this um, setup for black that also has no weaknesses, right? There's not, not really... Black didn't really do anything wrong. They didn't make any h6 move that we can try to use as a weakness. So they also is going to be is going to take some time to start this attack. I really like these positions from the side that attacks on the king side mm -hmm. because this whole like play of playing on the queen side and creating slowly weaknesses. I kind of like that my attack is straight on the king and that it's gonna it either makes it or it just doesn't. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. So so why not? knight f1. Don't really be surprised at this one. It's a very common maneuver for the knight in many openings. And uh, for now, the knight is just going to be there to open up the place for, for the bishop. And then later it might join the kingside attack, maybe with uh, the g3 square. So okay. we established that white is going to go for a kingside attack. Um, it's a bit more difficult to find the exact moves, but I'll tell you this one. So Fisher played h4 here. I like it. So H4 cannot can never be wrong. <laughs> yeah, if it's defended, I think it, can, it also can never be wrong. It was the important point of it was to protect the g5 square. Mm -hmm. That maybe our bishop, if it ever needs to defend the pawn from f4, that there's no like there's no g5, and also of course we just want to push our pawns towards the king. So that was the best way to continue the attack too. So Fisher played it well. I'll show the next few moves and then ask you what to do now so this is an important moment of the game so white developed black also did exactly their plan um, and in any middle game it's important to keep in mind the opponent's plans so what do you think the opponent is trying to do and what would we do about it uh, well there's another c4 pawn and then the pawns are being pushed maybe after a while the rooks are on the queen side and um I think black might get a queen sooner or later if we don't interfere. Mm -hmm. So what is black's immediate like threat? What are they going to do next move, let's say? Okay. Um, well. It's about the pawn structure. It's not yeah. exactly a threat. So is it c4? Just simple as that. No, it's not c4. It but isn't. c4, of course, could be played. So they just played a4. Yeah, so they want to play b3? No, they want to play a3. Oh, okay. And I thought, that, I thought one... that looks a bit blocking to me. That's why I didn't consider it. Because after b3, okay, then c4. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, hmm. so a3 is a bit more of a positional um, like of a positional plan. So mm -hmm. let's say we ignore it. Let's say we play h5. So in these cases, we need to kind of use our positional knowledge to decide which pawn structure is preferable. So now after black plays a3, I'm starting to not like our position on the queen side. Why? Because it's um, now there's not really a good choice. If we capture it, of course, we can see that it's not great no. from a positional sense because of this weakness on a a2. So this one I think is more visible. But the one with b3, as you've mentioned, this one doesn't seem as bad. But uh, yeah, in reality, at least. But yeah, in reality, no, I understand. <laughs> no, I understand that it's really locked, and that's why it doesn't look bad immediately. Uh, but this is 
um, like a positional mistake for pretty much any end game, I would say, even like middle game. So first of all, you're right about C4. Now C4 will uh, can come in with more effect, mm -hmm. but more so I would say is this pawn. So this is okay. kind of one of the end game principles that if let's say we were left with like only the knights or something, then it would just be really bad news. Um, actually, the knight can still come, but um, let's say the knight comes from b5 to c3, and then this rook can never leave. And like, if black ever finds a way to attack this pawn, it's kind of like a lost cause for like the end game. That doesn't sound good. But it's it's a bit far fetched. But that's kind of um, that's a positional principle to know is that this pawn structure, when the pawn is so far advanced. Like that means it's a never it's never gonna be a good end game and that one piece is gonna be tied to defending the spawn. So how do we and stop that? So how do we stop that? Is that we don't allow A3 in the first place. Okay. How do we not allow it? By playing A3 ourselves. Yeah. So you kind of need to decide which weakness is preferable over the other wow. if you need to create one. And this one um is the is the better version because um because we're kind of trading one weakness for another. So A3, mm -hmm. for sure, it's not the greatest pawn, but so is A4. If we find a way to attack A4, then it kind of compensates the weakness on A3. So both of them are weak, and um, that's the best we can come out of gotcha. from this okay. queen side situation. Rook A3 looked a bit more dangerous, because then this is a weakness, and then there's also this yeah. bishop that's yeah. kind of looking at the rook. So Fisher just recaptured like this and uh, from now on now that he kind of neutralized the queen side um we'll see we'll see how he continues with the attack now i feel like at this point is where a lot of people get lost um like do you ever have that problem in the middle games where everything seems to be fine but then you cannot find the next plan never <laughs> no of course that's it's yeah it's one of the most common things obviously and unfortunately, it's the uh, middle games can be just really, really, really rough if you cannot find a strategy, a plan, or something like this. But then there's it depends on the opening. So here, the the stake is clear. We just have to attack, push our pawns forward, put all the pieces into the kingside attack. That would be my approach now. Yeah, and that's perfect. So <laughs> something that never fails is improving your pieces, and that's what I always like really emphasize when I'm teaching middle games, um, as long as there's no immediate threat from the opponent. So I guess the first step is you check for the opponent's threats and what they want to do. And if there's nothing immediate like that, then the next best thing you can do is just improve your pieces yeah. and try to have a plan of where they're going and uh, everything should be good. That's I think middle games could be um, very simple if you just stick to improving your pieces and putting them on better squares. So, for that's, example, that we can sounds start good with... the way you're saying that. <laughs> yeah, but in reality, it's not, yeah, of course. It's not that simple, I guess. But, um, for example, in these positions, there is no tactics to calculate. And I even see that people spend so much time as well on these middle games to figure out a plan when really all you need is like one minute to just improve your next piece and leave all the time to calculate for later when you're starting well, an attack. Although I'm thinking of tactical. Uh, plans already again that's what's yeah it's so crazy okay so <laughs> now we improve the bishop as well to maybe um look at e6 um in the future so fisher continues with just uh repositioning a bit the knight went to f1 but that's once just again because it got attacked. that's the third it got time. attacked <laughs> so something it got attacked so now there's a new square for us to look at is e4 right so that's where the knight is going next okay okay and okay. it didn't really have much choice so it either could be stuck here on g2 or once again trapped on g4 or it goes back right okay, so there wasn't yeah. really a choice so this one is better because it gets to go to a nicer square um so black also continued with their own plan bring the piece on the queen side while we bring pieces on the king side like this boom well, Fisher does it, not we, but what else do you think is left to improve? Well, our knight should go to e4 as planned. 
think yes, that's nice. 92 is good. Yeah, and, and also one more piece that needs improvement is our queen. queen. Yeah. So maybe this happens naturally if the knight goes to c3, the black knight, because we cannot really stop it. Maybe we could with the bishop to d2, but then again, hmm, it's interesting. But then, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Was good. 92 was perfectly good, and so is queen h5. That's what he played to just activate the queen. And the thing is, if you notice, black doesn't have a dark squared bishop. So that already gives us some um, attacking advantages. Yeah. And also this bishop h3, although it might look insignificant, but it actually does a big job of not allowing any, you know, any f6 pawn break. Yeah, okay. So it's just, uh, like, there's not really too many pawn pushes that black can do to get us out of there. g6 would be a problem for all the dark squares. So that's why the queen is kind of safe there. Yes, very. Not only that, so the next idea would be Knight d2, knight e4, knight f6. That's that's a bit close to, to reality, but not exactly what happened. So <laughs> no, it is it is close. Okay. Like uh, so knight d2 was played next, and now knight c3 from black looks like a normal move, ah. but it actually ended up being a mistake. Oh. So um I mean black had to create something else there. They had to play like c4 because I think black underestimated the immediate danger that the king was in. So this was really necessary to create some sort of counterplay. But instead, knight c3 is a mistake. So how would you play next? That's probably the a nice, hmm. that's a nice so, move. Yeah, I, so what I really want to go to is... So this is my plan, and maybe it's not working. But I want to go to f6 with my knight. But yeah. now the knight is on c3. So if I play my knight on e4, it will be taken. Which is not so no. Actually, it's really good. <laughs> then I can use my rook to go to g4, maybe. Yeah. So I would play knight to e4. But then, of course, there's another simpler move: bishop to g2. Okay, so you want to go this way. So knight e4, what you mentioned first, is like is equally as good as the solution. Ha. Huh, okay. So it's equally I'm, as I'm good, and it that. actually <laughs> no, it happened later in the game as well mm -hmm. but the move that was played in the game i don't know if anybody got it but it's um it's i think it's just there to uh, it, it just looks really nice it's bishop f6 ah, nice yeah this is something i didn't think of but normally i would <laughs> so what happens do you want to solve what uh, i think yeah, is it's, the idea it's really difficult this? to defend is it it takes on uh, taking on f6 yeah and then you take back queen yeah. to g5 check well, first of all, there is the queen going to d5. I, no, it doesn't matter. D5. Yeah, queen d5 doesn't matter, right? Because of rook here. Yeah, or, or the queen to g4 check. Yeah, that too. It's... Yes. Everything is winning. Yeah, but the, the rook is even nicer, it's true. So, so, so what let's say I king do? here. Yeah. Uh -huh, this is okay. all nice finish. So how to... How to finish that? Now, uh, after queen h6, the rook goes to g8, and then we are... Oh, there's so many options. Mm -hmm. hmm. There's there is one that's, I think, the most clear-cut. and it's so, um... Okay, so what about queen h6? Rook, rook g8, g8, rook e5, with the plan rook... going to, to h5. Rook g6? Oh. Okay, never mind. That's a bit... Maybe white is still winning, but they're kind of getting out a bit. No, the... that's not good. Yeah, no, no, that was stupid. There's a more clear solution that has to do some... with this checkmate instead. Is this... Okay, knight to f3. Not that one, Close. although I, I could bet that it wins as well. <laughs> Mm, immediately rook to e5. Also, Not that either. Bishop to f5. Exactly. Bishop f5. So I right away... I earlier. I didn't think it would work, but it does. Yeah. No, checkmate on one is threatened. And then after the capture... Rook e7. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. And then you just take this and there, there is no defense against the checkmate. 
Yeah. So and the problem is if the queen takes the rook, um, although it would be a material imbalance with the same. I mean, we have like a rook and two minor pieces, but all our pieces, all black's pieces, are on the queen side. So yeah. So White this pawn is also too times. strong, yeah. and the king is too weak. Yeah. I think those two factors just make it. Yes. I'm yes, not yes. really a material imbalance. That won't so. Matter. Yeah, and in case the king runs this way, we can just make a checkmate even simpler. That's so evil. Page seven. No yeah, so that's what happens if the opponent had captured the bishop. But I guess the opponent saw that Fisher cannot just sacrifice for nothing, and he just went more into the defense with queen e8. Okay. Next, we do your, your plan, knight e4. Finally. Knight joins the attack nicely. And uh, if it gets captured, then the rook recaptures and just joins even better. So that's also a winning position. Mm -hmm. In the game, g6 happened. You'll see the end is like it ends really nicely. So nice. I really like the ending of it. But um, all of these moves, I don't really know if like. You can guess them to we can guess them together because they're like everything is just good, you know? <laughs> no matter what you play, it's gonna be good. But it gets a bit more spicy because Black decided to also finally do something on the king side, on the queen side. How do you think we'll react to that? We ignore it. That's the perfect spirit of uh, <laughs> an attacking player. How about F H five, I mean? Yeah, that's what Fisher did. That's that's the spirit to, Fisher to play. Fisher and me were like... Yeah, buddies. <laughs> did Frederick do an episode on Fisher? He did. It was very interesting. Frederick's mates for everyone. We made the episode last year. Mm -hmm. Where he had the calls with Mr. Bobby Fisher in his late years. Mm -hmm. So we continue the attack just and then... Yeah, no matter what Black does, we continue. So the rook comes to h4, mm -hmm. fully already making threats. Um, and these next few moves, Black went rook a7. It looks weird, but it's it's really just a defensive thing. Yeah, if we take, then they take back and it's a defending move. Yeah, Exactly. So they needed something to defend against all of this. Mm -hmm. So this was the solution with rook a7. And then white plays also a weird move, but it makes sense. Bishop to g2, just for the bishop oh, to okay. kind of maybe join the game like this. But it ended up not even being necessary because after the d takes c2 recapture, what do you think is the path to kind of get into the mating net? This, this is a tactical. At this point, it's a bit... I would say it's a, it's a bit hard if you're not looking for it, but okay, bishop, if you get the first... Bishop e4. Bishop e4, uh, I wouldn't say so. I would say it's a bit too, yeah, it's a bit slow. Dang. Okay, so like with how... every move, you need to make a threat of mate in one or like mate in two. Okay. Because this pawn is pretty far. It is a bit far, right? So, so how this do we do point, this? I, I, have, I see a couple of plans for you at home. If you haven't figured it out, uh, stop the video now before I might find it or Svetlana will tell us what it is so let me think for a couple of more seconds i see i always see like okay can we take on g6 i mean there's even the option if we take with the queen and they take back with the h pawn we but it's not even made anyway so what happens if we take on g6 they have to take back with uh the f pawn, f -pawn. but we cannot take with the queen yeah and then the rook just is an extra defense for yep. for black. So this is not really working. How do we do this instead? If we go to h6 with the queen. That's the good, correct move. first move. That's yes. the correct first move. Yep. So you got queen h6. Okay. Immediate threat. Yeah. Black has to go queen f8. Correct. Right? So now... And now find the nice end. Ah, uh, is this... Yes, it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's the queen takes on takes on h7 check. Yeah, and that's and that's how the game ended how with queen crazy. h7. 
So tell me what you, you calculated with Queen so H. So the king takes back, of course. Then we give a check mm -hmm. on g6. It's a double check. So the king has to take back. And then now this bishop mm -hmm. move, which was played earlier, will be the yeah. final move. So the bishop actually ended up being useful on the on that diagonal. I think I feel like he noticed it early. Like I feel like he yeah um, he saw it from it like so. in advance. It seems so, so yeah. And any other king move, for example, like this, also leads to a nice checkmate like that. Yeah. But yeah. I thought it was a really nice end to a really nice game too. That's very and accurate, yes. Although not every king's Indian attack is going to be you know this tactical but it was a it was a good example of you know opposite side attacks where both players had their own chances but of course fisher is one of the best attacking players ever and uh, he delivered a really nice attack here and checkmate beautiful so that is the king's indian attack who are yeah. the players who played this opening the most obviously fisher was not mm -hmm. only a King's Indian attack player, but also a King's Indian defense player, because mm -hmm. both openings are quite straightforward to attacking on the King's side, as you already mentioned. Who else is a King's Indian attack player? If you would name one or two strong players, do you know one? I think they all, like, whenever I would look at the database, I would sometimes, like, see all these, like, big names, but the none of them play it as their main weapon, sure, of yeah. course. So there's not really, like, somebody that plays it constantly. It's most of these top players, they play it as a surprise or something like that, but if we just sort it out by ELO, I like doing this, we can see all the players who have kind of employed it before. So this is against the French, for example. Mm -hmm. We have Kasparov, who played it, Report. Like, it's basically everybody has used it at some point, you know. Nakamura and Rapport are two yeah. aficionados. <laughs> oh, yeah. and... Uh, um... I feel like Amin is the one who's, uh, yes. like, uh, a fan of it at the top level. It definitely looks as if this is the case. Wow. And yeah. he has some good scores with it. Yeah, he's it's the most, uh, like, devoted fan. How cool. Look at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's interesting. That's, uh, yeah, it's always, I mean... I'm a freak for statistics. I could look at statistics for hours and hours, and I've actually done this even days. So this mm -hmm. is always quite fascinating or interesting to me who played which opening. And this is, yeah. So the King's Indian attack, ladies and gentlemen, good against the Sicilian, the French, and the Karo Khan. That is something we learned today. Well, thank you so much, Svetlana. We see each other soon enough. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.